concerns can seem like a stretch. If, if there's yeah. a real strong body identification, or just like to use my diagram over here, if I'm convinced, if I believe that, that this is my reality, not only the body, but the private mind that goes along with the body, you know, if I'm really, if I really believe in private mind and that this is my identity, then that all those lessons about I am as God created me and I am the light of the world and everything, they can seem to be like a, like a big, big, big stretch, almost unfathomable. It sounds sentimentally nice. A lot of times when people, someone who has a real strong investment in the body, it sounds like, it sounds good. But what we want to do is we want to question so deeply the beliefs and, and just throw everything out on the table that we just, the ego can't hide when it's, when it's put out, when it's not hidden, when it's, when it's laid out on the table, so to speak. You were talking this morning, Linda, about at one point when we were reading one of the lessons you just, that I just realized that my mind was like wanting to be drawn other places and I wasn't even listening to what was being read. Right. It was the uh, the lesson where we had three legs that I've already what was I don't remember the last one now. So 162. Yeah, 162. Okay. And we've read two others that he had the same topic. And, you know, I could stay with those. And I got to that one, and Rhonda finished reading, and I thought, I don't know what she said. It. Didn't hear a word. Huh? Didn't you. hear a word. No. Do you remember what it was? Because I remember you um, went back and you looked, read it again to yourself and said, where was it that I went off? And you recognized where it was. Where it was. I'm real good at blocking. <laughs> it was 162. I remember it all came back to the idea that you thought you were going to have to give something up to experience that I am as God created me. That there was going to be a sacrifice called for. And that sacrifice was me. <laughs> and That's how it was perceived. Yeah. I see what mm -hmm. mind thinks it's going to be the cost. And, of, and of see, I've, I've already forgotten it totally. Yeah. You know, black it right out. Important, but I thought that, it was really that, good that you were able to go back and see what yeah. it was that you read and you said, okay, no thank you, I'm not going any further. Yeah. <laughs> you just shut down. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Because that, when she finished, I thought, I've got to read that again because I can't meditate on that because I don't know what it said. Yeah. And but that's that good to be able to recognize that resistance and start to please uncover it a little bit. Yeah. Because we talked about the exact thing. It was like, why, why would I not want to know about I am as God created me? Why would I be resistant to that? That sounds wonderful. Why would I want to wander off somewhere and not hear what he has to say. It has to be because what I perceive as the cost of that is, is something that I value dearly. Mm -hmm. And that's what you identify. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately. <laughs> well, but that's, that's, that's a yeah. great place to start because that's certainly a big one that, that has to be looked at. But I think um, Tara Singh sort of points out, too, that sometimes when you get into denial, because it says, if this thought is held firmly in mind, it can save the world. And to think that you are, as God created you, um, again, is such a tremendous thing that, again, in our lowness, we couldn't possibly be all that. That denial that we could be as God created us, this no perfect, sense. sinless being that has everything, not promised, but already has it, you know. And um, you have to really question, you know, the thing I've noticed is, is you have to question all of the littleness. Mm -hmm. it, it can even seem like it's humble. <coughs> or I think the word sometimes is realistic. <laughs> well, let's all be realistic now. <laughs> you know, or let's, it's, it's like that false humility, too, of, of saying, well, I, I'm not there. I know that I've got a long way to go. Well, 
that's something that we that has to really be questioned because that's that's as Jesus says that's a very arrogant <laughs> thing. saying that the Christ yeah. Yeah. I've got a long way to go I'm not there yet I don't think so doesn't quite go together mm-hmm. so we have to question personhood we have to question private mind we have to question linear time um, and also this thing about like you're talking about giving up to, to, to be as I am as God created me I have to give up this seeming sense of self Another way that we could bring it back that kind of relates to it a little bit from a different angle would be, I was sharing in Adrian this whole thing of um, relationships in the sense that it seems like two people come together and like you were saying, I want the house to look nice, I want to be clean, I want to make a good impression. We could call it the, the initial meeting and the initial dating is make a good impression. Don't, don't unload on the first date you know, as the world teaches everything about yourself, you know. may not have a second date. <laughs> you, you may never ever get the second date, so just let some of your positive aspects shine and come through. Carefully discern and, and be, dis- have, be discreet on what you reveal. Feel your way along. Feel your way along so you don't blow it on the first date, and then, then maybe the second date a little bit more, and then a little bit more as you go along, and you what? <laughs> you know, you get a few other, well, I never knew that about you. Mm, I have to think about that one. But as you go along, basically, it, it's like there was a book written one time, do I have to <coughs> give up me to be loved by you? You know, that, that the ego wants the sense of closeness and intimacy. Well, let's share certain illusions. Maybe we have certain things that we, we believe in or certain things we can pursue that seem in the world like commonalities, you know, and that's good. That's good news for the relationship. That's seen as, as a stable relationship. But we don't want to completely fuse, fuse, according to the ego's logic, because that would be losing the sense of myself. That would be giving me up. I would, that would be losing my uniqueness. That would be you know, completely fusing. And the ego, that's the last thing that it wants, would be a total union. It, what it wants is it wants the bodies to be together, it wants the companionship as it defines it and everything, and it wants to keep on the separate mind. You know, even so-called the best of marriages, well, we don't agree on everything. <laughs> what can you expect? We're human beings, you know. Jesus is saying, when you to come to the awareness of the right mind, to, to come to divine mind, that you need to come to a place where there's a total merging or a total agreement. In other words, what would that be? Like, wow, that seems like an awful high goal to have perfect union and harmony in a relationship. Seems like, well, the old way, you've got to take the good with the bad. You've got to compromise. That's, I always thought compromise was a, a pretty good term. You know, that's, that's, what, that's a good thing for relationships. You've got to compromise. Not with the course. You know, you're getting there and, and he's saying, no, salvation is no compromise of any kind. That's the Holy Spirit. That's that's the union and the harmony. That would be like to accept the Holy Spirit as the goal for your relationship and the sole goal to say I'm gonna, anything that any separate interest that I have I would want to bring to the Holy Spirit so that I could be right-minded, so to speak. So that would be the merging. That would be the part. That would be the higher or superordinate goal is, is above the specific separate interest. The Holy Spirit is above persons even. <coughs> the spirit is a reminder that minds are joined, or to even go beyond that, that mind is one. And again, to the ego, the Holy Spirit is the biggest threat to the relationship. <laughs> it wants the relationship to be bodies together. You know, I've talked about it, bodies under the same roof. You know, you've heard of those marriages where people, two bodies are together for 50 or 60 years, and the quality of life or the communication may be limited to, you know, watching the grass grow together or, or, uh... Watching TV. Hey, what do you think about so-and-so? Or what do you think about them, that sports team? Or, the, you know, my, isn't it lovely weather today? <laughs> two hours later, don't you think it's a nice day today? And then two hours later, my, isn't it a lovely day today? <laughs> 
<laughs> like, you know, so you go, like, that's safe. Or even, you know, taking it away from that extreme and saying, well, you know, we have really good communication. We talk about our feelings, and we talk about what we think, and we talk about everything, almost. There are some things where it's just kind of, it's not good to get into because, boy, that's just, things blow up. But to finances, we just kind of, you know, we don't get into that. But we can talk about the kids, and we can talk about, you know, what house to buy or something. But these things, it's best just to kind of avoid it or tiptoe around. Or you do your thing, I'll do mine. I won't ask you any questions, you don't ask me any questions, and then we'll be happy. To me, that that seems to be, you know, less away from the extreme and, and more of what at least I've experienced to say, well, that's, that doesn't seem like a bad thing. It seems okay to have my interests apart from you and, you know, my things that I do and you may not agree, but, you know, you don't have to agree with everything I do and everything I buy or everything I think. I'll do what I do and you do what you do. You go your way, I go mine. In other areas, we can come together and we can have what seems like this union. It's like, <laughs> oh, this is union, you know. We're joined in these things, but there's a few that, you know, just will never, will never agree on everything. And who does? That's the best you can expect. It's kind of like bringing someone over to a family and saying, now when we go in, whatever you do, don't bring up politics, <laughs> you know? Or you just pick the topic area because it's like it's this big hotbed and there's a strong, seeming strong opinion. People are, I'm right about this. I know this candidate. I know this party is better, you know, or, you know, just pick your spot. But, yeah. but there's always areas that are hidden in that. And, and that's what's so great about when we come together to examine these things because, you know, it's great if, if you want to bring up the realm of politics, if you want to bring up the realm of um, environment, um, you know, the ecological issues, if you want to bring up abortion, if you want to bring up racism, if you want to bring up sexism, if you want to bring up nuclear disarmament or the military, you know, any of those things, that, that as we throw these out, if anything's are crossing your mind or anything there seems to be charges on it, or anything that you really seem to have a pretty strong opinion on, that you're pretty polarized on one side or the other of those, those would all be excellent things to bring up during our, our week seminar. It's not personal. I mean, that's the beautiful thing about looking at the ego is that there aren't any personal issues. And that's the thing that, that a lot of times people seem to fear so fear the most about revealing or of, of saying that. I mean, we had a woman in this, at Adrian where she just said, gosh, I can't believe what I've said today. I just spilled my guts. For 20, 30 years I've been holding these little things around thinking that it's just stupid. I'm dumb to even hold on to them, but I can't tell anybody about them because they're <laughs> dumb. Anyway, and she just, <coughs> just started... But she got rolling. She got rolling. She just like empties out. She went, whoo, gosh, I feel, oh my. <laughs> it was like, it was like it wasn't personal. It wasn't. She wasn't carrying that bag of stuff around. And also to do something with it. Again, we were we were tracing it through through it and unveiling it as yeah, this is just ego thinking. This isn't this isn't your thinking. This is ego thinking. And it only felt like a load because it felt like her thinking to her. It felt like that's who she was. That's how she thought of herself. But I noticed thoughts I'm having is I wonder how this is for you, Lynette, with all the ideas that we've brought out and been talking about. Because I, you said before we started that you haven't really studied the course, that you bought the books this week and flipped open a little bit. but. Um, the only problem I'm having at this point is staying awake. <laughs> I have to admit that. I, boy, this is my time of the afternoon. I just got to. Uh, well, I probably need to get up and get some oxygen in my bloodstream. 
But as far as the concept, I'm trying to.